and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television where you, the MSME, get sent to stage. This is ET Now's special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and centre on every industry and area that matters to you. Tonight, we're talking philanthropy and what you, the MSME entrepreneur, should know about causes that are close to your heart. Who better to discuss this than we have tonight, Zadina Skruwala of Swadesh Foundation. Deval Sangvi, co-founder of uh, Dasra and Shaheen Mistry, founder of Teach for India. Deval, Serena, Shaheen, thank you all very much for being with us here tonight to talk about philanthropy, how philanthropy is changing and what advice you would really have for the viewers of our show about philanthropy and about issues which are close to their hearts. And let me very briefly, for the sake of our viewers, start by asking each of you to talk about your foundations. Great. Uh, so I work with an organization called Dasra, which means enlightened giving in Sanskrit. We provide managerial support to help organizations, NGOs scale across the country, as well as provide support to both foundations uh, as well as corporates in affecting their giving uh, in a more impactful manner. Sure. So hi, I'm Zarina Skruwala, and I work with the Swades Foundation. Um, we work in rural India in six blocks of South Raigad. And our basic idea is to create a model for rural transformation using three principles. One is a 360 degree holistic approach. So we do water, sanitation, health, economic development, all in the same geography and create a model. The other is being very, very collaborative. So we create an ecosystem for change, working with multiple stakeholders, partners, vendors, government, community. And the third is we have an exit strategy. So we need to really work on sustainability. And we have a saying at Swades, which is Swa se bane des, which means we make our country, we make our reality. Sure. Hi, I'm Shaheen. Um, I work with Teach for India. Teach for India is trying to do two things, essentially. We run a, a two-year fellowship program where we put some of the best and brightest and most committed people in the country into classrooms for two years. Um, as a way to grow their leadership. And then as alumni, we see them affect systemic change. Um, and, and we'll hopefully keep doing that until all children in the country get an excellent education. Zarina, one thing that you said was building a model for change and development. Let me pick up on that and open this up to the three of you. How's philanthropy being, you know, how's it changed in India? The three of you have been involved with these causes, with your foundations and organizations for a while now. You've seen how philanthropy has grown and changed in India. What have been some of the biggest changes, both whether it's from the corporate side or how people are viewing philanthropy, how mindsets are changing? I think the greatest change came about in 2013 with the CSR, CSR Act. It not only brought a lot of vitality and a lot of money to the sector, it did bring a lot of money, but the most important thing that I believe it gave is a change in mindset. I think some, corp uh, some of us in the NGO world already had those mindsets because we came from corporate, the corporate world. But with the rise of CSR, we became a lot more accountable. And I think that's one word that we should really focus on in philanthropy, to be accountable, to be sustainable, and to some extent be scalable. I think these are the three things that CSR allowed for because it did bring an influx of money but it also became with a change of mindset, which is critical. Actually, mindset should change first and then money. And the other thing I think, it's now become a really cool job. For me, this is the best job in the world. And I just want to, I hope that your viewers understand that philanthropy does not mean you have to be a millionaire. No, you don't have to be a millionaire. You can be anybody and do philanthropy, and Shaheen can talk about that. She, excels at inspiring young people. I think for young people, either even for two years or as a career option, philanthropy is now becoming the go-to place. So the two reasons that I believe young people should look at it, this as a career option is that there's a tremendous opportunity to fast track. You're a bright, young, highly educated, passionate person with a purpose. Philanthropy is a place where you can fast track and learn fast. Second is, this is the one place where you'll really learn a 360 degree. You learn to engage with multiple stakeholders like nowhere else. Sure. Whether it's the community, you'll get to know the real India, you'll learn to deal with the government, you'll learn to deal with donors, you'll learn to deal with vendors, 
there is no job that gives you the 360 degree that this gives. Okay, Shine, come in on this. Uh, yeah. you, you know, you have a model where you encourage youngsters, you encourage people of all ages to really come. Uh, you, they go through this intensive program and then, you know, they go out into the industry. Have things started changing in terms of mindsets about how people are viewing it? Yeah, I think I, I was smiling at, at your question because I was going back to when I started my work, I was 18 and I didn't actually want to start something. I wanted to find something to do. And at that time, there were such limited options. And I think my answer to your question about what's changed most radically and most importantly has just been the number of people that today work in the sector who never would have considered working in the sector. What's driving that change? Um, I think it's, it's one, I think the opportunity today um, is such that you can actually live and sustain yourself and work in the sector, which was very different from years ago when I was 18. I think the second is there's an increasing awareness that this isn't about giving and sacrificing, but it's about leading a fundamentally different life, a life of purpose, a life that gives you back so much. Um, and so the being able to maintain a decent lifestyle, do what you want to do beyond your work, but also have work that is powerful and meaningful and work that you want to get up um, on Monday mornings and do, I think there's an increasing awareness of that. Is it getting more corporatized in that sense? I, I think there's definitely uh, systems and processes that are being put in place uh, which is similar to the corporate sector. Uh, and I think that's a benefit, to be honest with you. I think uh, many of us started our organizations again, like Shaheen, at a very early age. And so our ability to manage large teams, to put in systems process, look after finance, accounts, HR, et cetera, uh, I think it's limiting for any entrepreneur to do that, especially younger entrepreneurs. Um, I think what, what has changed, though, is uh, from the giving perspective, at least, um, is 27 Indians alone in the last three years, according to the Huran list, has given have given 50,000 crores away towards philanthropy and I think these individuals are not just check writers but they're providing their skills their networks um, for example Anuaga and Meher spend quite a bit of time on the TFI and the Akanksha board and so I think as these individuals are bringing capital as well as their skills they're expecting a level of comfort uh, that is sort of more I guess regularized or expected in the corporate sector and I think that's really the opportunity not just for young individuals but I would even say people in their mid 40s who have perhaps achieved achieved what they wanted to achieve in the corporate space, but their value add to entrepreneurs and existing organizations in the nonprofit sector today, I think is extremely critical as we're looking at long-term systemic change. We were talking about CSR and the mandatory CSR. Let me circle back to that. The government has mandated 2% of costs of profits of companies is what needs to be set aside for uh, CSR activities. I want to ask the three of you, can you enforce, is that the best way to ensure that corporates are involved in philanthropy and giving? I, I mean, I don't have a strong view on that. I, I try to think of it as one more opportunity for people to become aware of giving. And I think in that sense, as the recipient um, of CSR funding, it's been great. Like people have given money who previously wouldn't have given money. I think the real challenge for us as human beings, though, is to ask ourselves, why do we give? You know, and, and I think when we realize that we actually give for ourselves and we give because it's just we live in a world where there is no choice but to try to make the world better, um, then giving becomes truly sustainable. And I've seen a lot more awareness of that as well. So whereas CSR may be the initial platform to give, I think once people start getting actually engaged with work, really incredible things happen on both sides. One of the arguments uh, that's been made for mandatory CSR is that it ensures that funds are going into sectors or areas or industries that are overlooked. For instance, yes, a country like India desperately needs attention as far as education is concerned or healthcare is concerned, but mandatory CSR ensures that companies are giving to other areas as well. Would you all agree with that view? And so again, I think if you look at the sustainable development goals, which the Indian government and the whole world have signed up for to achieve by 2030, there's 17 different areas that need support. Poverty is not just livelihoods. This is also a misconception I think people have coming into this space. Poverty means lack of agency, lack of health, lack of education, lack of 
justice uh, to these groups. And I don't think there is a silver bullet solution to that. I think the CSR laws in that sense have been extremely well crafted where it allows donors to fund a variety of initiatives um, uh, that is actually looking at providing a sense of agency and empowering the communities who need it the most. But then it really is a personal uh, sort of choice as a giver. Uh, if you want to focus on the elderly, the children, the education, rural, urban. And I think that choice has to happen because there is, again, philanthropy starts with the heart and then the mind. And I think that, that, that flexibility is required because, again, there is no silver bullet to solving this issue. Sure. Um, one more question then as far as CSR. And then, you know, I want to talk about the big picture as far as philanthropy is concerned. Uh, there's also been criticism as far as the NGOs or the end mile, the last mile is concerned. Uh, are those getting fixed there have been some concerns about you know how perhaps the money is going into different areas which NGO for instance is associated with what cause etc have any of you seen you know those concerns from an industry point of view uh, how are those concerns and you know getting addressed how should they be addressed I think it's right for corporates to really care where their money went okay I think it's correct that they should feel they should insist and ensure good measurement systems, that they should ensure good accountability across the board. But one thing the corporates do need to learn is that there's no, uh, it takes time. Sometimes it takes six months to a year longer than what we set out. And any good, any good NGO will never force a community to do anything. We'll take a very quick break on that note, uh, but there's much more that we have to discuss on philanthropy on the other side. Do stay tuned. with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight we're talking about philanthropy and what MSME entrepreneurs need to know about causes which are close to their hearts. I would want for the three of you to talk to our viewers about how philanthropy can be something that is bottom up, can be something that you are encouraging your employees to be passionate about and it's not just something that is top down and if a CEO or a CXO level is interested in a particular area of philanthropy, is that something that necessarily then your employees should be interested in as well? How do you ensure it becomes more inclusive at organizations? I mean, I, I think the most powerful way is for leaders of organizations to lead by example and, and engage directly themselves. I think that sends the most, most powerful message down the organization, but also creating time um, and flexibility for people to engage in real ways beyond just giving money, uh, I think makes a huge difference. How do you engage beyond just giving money? Giving people, say, three hours a week to go off and, and work somewhere, go work in a, a local school, go do something you feel passionate about. Um, I think companies, many companies do a, a CSR day once a year. I personally feel like we need to step that up a lot more and that the energy that people will get from going out once a week and spending a few hours will more than pay back in terms of the actual work that they do within the company. Are you seeing enough of that happening? It's, I mean, I see pockets of it. I think it's starting. And I think the, the idea of storytelling uh, helps with all of those things. When five companies do it, 50 more companies will, will feel uh, excited about trying it. Sure, okay. I think just to add to that, the, the act of a volunteer is such a powerful act. China is a past master at getting people to volunteer with passion. I think if you can even ask the companies to look at it from a slightly selfish point of view, when your employees actually go out and do that, first of all, they're building, they're energizing themselves, which you touched, which Shaheen touched upon, but they're also getting to know the India that they don't see every day. And they're going to be able to think about those problems and think how can my company build solutions, future solutions for these problems of today, which most companies don't even address. Now, I work, as I said, in the rural areas. There's such few companies even interested in that sector. How, How can that be fixed? Of tomorrow? Yeah. It's the sector of tomorrow. It's the biggest potential growth market probably in the world. I think China's already finished that part. We have this market. You don't know this market. Come and see, learn, understand, live with them. We provide those opportunities. Some companies take them, some don't. What lessons we would don't you want our viewers I, to take away from that? Can I tell that? you the real problem? Hmm. 
it's not an econ and, it, and he touched on it it's not an economic problem it's a social problem it's a mindset problem it's these are the problems that can be solved only through one on one human contact that bonding that happens when one of our children go to the village that's it's priceless and if a, if any human being sees that and engages at that level that is the most price it will be the best days of their lives they will always come back to it and say what can my company do to fix this problem so one or two things that you'd want to tell our viewers you're saying that there's not enough attention happening in rural india there's no attention there's no attention happening in from rural corporates. india from corporates government is how trying. can that be fixed what would you like to tell our viewers about what they should be doing if they want to focus on this area and philanthropy i think it's the biggest market even if you do it for purely selfish reasons do it it's a biggest market of tomorrow it's sitting there it's a market it's got aspirations it's got drive it's got ambition it's just sitting there waiting to be not tapped in a bad way see it's it's a potential it's an opportunity it's beautiful use it learn about it and only if you go and learn about it can the people of tomorrow these young people who volunteer today who are going to be running their companies in 5 years now that's how long it takes <laughs> it used to take us 20 but now it takes 5 this is a beautiful opportunity to learn as we winding down this conversation then um for our viewers who are saying yes there's definitely an opportunity like you're saying rural india there's definitely an opportunity for a country like india what are the one or two things that they should be doing as the leaders of their businesses to ensure that their employees are as uh, tied into philanthropy as they perhaps are and given the opportunities that exist in india what should they be doing so i think number one and you touched upon it with the last mile i think for any organization to improve their last mile coverage investing in management is critical and so i think from a funding perspective funding the management cost of these organizations there was a harvard business review article in 1999 that demonstrated if you fund the management of an organization you get a 50 to 100x multiplier so number one guiding your support as an individual giver or a corporate to managing of the organization and institutional building is critical and i think number two from a hands on support perspective to shaheen's point reading stories one day a year is not going to change our nation bringing your financial skills your hr skills your business skills to that organization and coupling that with funding will actually strengthen the institutional backbone of these organizations enabling them to reach that last mile but it's a huge shift in mindset that both the giver as well as the corporate volunteer needs to take uh to see how they're going to actually add value in solving problems versus just leaving with that feel good factor that they spent a day in a village in india okay so solving problems azreen i want to ask you uh, you were talking about giving what lessons from our global peers can we perhaps in the philanthropy space in india learn uh, can a country like india pick up any you know tips or anything from our global peers or are the problems and the solutions therefore in india very different from what's happening elsewhere every country uh, country is different but also very similar i think the biggest thing that maybe the global players have taught us is get involved get involved i think give your time give your energy don't just write checks that's one thing and the last thing i really want to reiterate is you don't have to be a billionaire or a millionaire to be a philanthropist anyone can be a philanthropist everyone can be a philanthropist and the younger you begin the better okay swa se bane des i right. really believe it okay uh, devil was talking uh, shaheen about funding Uh, and i want to give you the last word on that what's your own experience been when it comes to fundraising in india i'm going to actually broaden that a little bit and and answer your larger question which um i i think any organization has just one job to do really and that is to fully unleash the potential of their people and i think if companies asked people beyond work what do you feel passionate about as an individual right is it the bullying that your child is facing in school is it the garbage and then as devil said matching the skills that you have with the passion that you have and having the organization not just create the space and flexibility to allow that but actually value that and spread that I think that's how we're really going to move ahead when when every person in this country irrespective of their job has the space and is valued to actually follow what what they really believe in and what they most want to change. 
Um, and if that's funding, then that's funding, you know, but I think there's much more that people actually want to give and will shape the nation than just funding. All right. Shaheen, Zarina, Tewal, thank you all very much for being with us here tonight on Leaders of Tomorrow. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. We've of course managed to just scratch the surface of philanthropy and causes for corporate India. But if you have any feedback, anything that you want to tell us, you can always write in at leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. Tweet at me at sunanda underscore j or lot underscore et now or leave your comments on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on et now. You can also call us on that number you see on your screen. We love hearing from you. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good night.